<laughs> so we went to that restaurant together and I had my first almost all vegetable meal and oh so good it felt so good you guys and it's been a while since I had a bunch of vegetables and this it was all covered in butter you know and lots of salt and stuff delicious of course but it was just so nice to have like I just feel like my soul is filled now like I'm so happy and we had fun with family and now we're just gonna be running a bunch of errands and we leave tomorrow so yay for veggies <laughs> Starbucks. I got this. I'm gonna eat the whole thing right now. I also got something that's not so good, which is a chocolate croissant, which I'm gonna eat in a minute. And then I got the tea that I'm getting lately, peppermint tea plus coconut milk. Snack time. Okay, we are at Subway for our last meal of the trip here in El Paso. We ended up coming to Subway because we're hungry. It's the end of the day. We were eating chocolate earlier and I just want to have some food. So we got a little sandwich. I got a the Veggie Delight sandwich I've never had before, but it should be pretty decent. Let's see what we got. You know, too much bread and whatever, but it's a decent choice. Um, and then I got some sun chips and water. That's what we got. Here we go. Our hotel gives free cookies, and I had one and a half. And that's all I'm having, and I'm throwing these out. Hey guys, okay, our Nutritarian Nugget is about beans today. Beans. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you're healthy. So we're gonna read a little bit, just one little paragraph from The End of Diabetes from Dr. Furman. This is the thing that always blows me away, this particular thing I'm about to read you. Just listen if you haven't heard this before about beans. So End of Diabetes is really, really good information. Even if you don't have diabetes, even if you don't know somebody who has diabetes, it's still worth the read. It's got it, He puts things in different ways and it makes it really easy to understand when you read them different in different ways like this. So I'm going to put a link for this down below. Check this book out if you have diabetes or if someone you know has diabetes. Um, yeah, okay, so this is found on page 99. Okay, I'm just going to read this one paragraph. Because beans contain so much resistant starch, as much as 20 grams in each cup of navy beans, for instance, and because they contain amylase inhibitors that resist the digestion of their starch, a decent percentage of, percentage of the calories that are listed on the food label do not actually come into the bloodstream as glucose or even as calories. This is complicated, but remember that when the resistant starch hits the colon, it is acted on by bacteria and transformed into SCFAs. That transformation results in only about two calories per gram. The fermentation occurs so low down in the digestive tract that very little of it gets absorbed. This resistant starch, as well as most of the other fibers that are not assimilated, are counted as a part of the 200 to 300 calories per cup in the nutritional info. But the bottom line is that even though a cup of cooked beans may be listed as 225 calories, they actually give you much fewer calories per cup as a higher percentage of protein and fewer carbohydrates than show up in their analysis. All those listed 225 calories are setting off caloric and nutrient receptors in the stomach and small intestines, registering satiation and telling you you've eaten enough. And here's the amazing thing. Because of the presence of the amylase inhibitors and the resistant starch, maybe a quarter of those carbohydrate calories don't even get absorbed. What does that mean? Let, let me just say that in another way. When you eat beans, like let's say you eat 225 calories worth of beans, a quarter of those calories don't even get absorbed. So let's just figure that out for a sec. I'm going to take my little handy dandy calculator. 225 times 0.75. 
168.75 calories that you actually absorb when you eat 225 calories worth of beans. Is that amazing or what? That's so cool because those fibers and stuff, they just can't get digested. There's things inside those beans and things that happen inside your intestines that make it so you don't even digest that stuff. It's amazing. Okay, so now we've got some cool science behind us and we know why beans are so cool. I want to just talk to you a little bit about a couple of really cool recipes that you can do with beans. This comes from the Great Vegan Bean Book by Kathy Hester. I'll put a link for this down below as well. I just wanted to show you some of the pictures of the recipes that you can make with beans for dessert because this is pretty amazing. Husband and I always end up going to Veggie Nation, which is a restaurant in... Um, Las Vegas here that's vegan and they have a dessert that we get every single time every time we go to Veggie Nation you guys will see us get this ice cream and brownie dessert it's got bananas in it whatever but what's so amazing I just found out we've been getting this dessert for like a very long time the the brownie is made of black beans black beans guys it's made of black beans so um, that's something I want to point out. I didn't even notice this. We've been having this dessert for like months and months and months, and I never even knew it was made of black beans, and it tastes that good. So what I'm trying to say is you can make dessert out of beans and have it still be amazing. Check, uh, check this out. Double chocolate devil's food cookies. Okay, I'm just trying to make your mouth water a little bit. Black bean fudgesicles. Mm-hmm. Vanilla and rose water parfaits. Let's see, there's got to be another picture back here. And cherry basil crumble bars, you guys. I would so eat that right now. Can one of you please make it for me? <laughs> so anyways, just to show you, there's some really, really awesome recipes that you can make with beans that aren't necessarily things that you would have... Um, you normally think of like a stew or a soup or whatever you can use beans you can actually even put beans in your smoothie by the way I've done this before it's actually really good I should do this more now that I think about it but you can add some white beans like white like cannellini beans or navy beans these kinds of beans are really good just to put a few into your smoothie as you're blending it up not a lot just a few you don't really want to taste them but they'll add that fiber and that starch in there that will make that smoothie more hearty creamy and slow digesting so just some interesting things about beans. There's like a million other interesting things about beans, but I'm not going to do a whole video on that right now. I'll do it later. Thanks for watching this about uh, the magical fruit. I hope you add some more beans into your diet soon. They are like the best carbohydrate that you can possibly eat. And that's all I got for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot, as well as the liking and commenting, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!